Hi everyone. I mulled over for a number of months the decision whether or not to buy a Tesla or some of my other choices. And in this video, I'm going to go through my reasoning why and my thinking behind why I chose the Model 3. I did say in my collection video that there were a number of other choices and these choices were the Polestar 2, the Tesla Model 3, the Audi Q4 e-tron, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. Now I didn't choose these five cars just because they could be placed in numerical order. It just sort of happened like that but I would like to uh, give a little shout out to one of my viewers who did point this out on a community post. But we're going to start off with the Kia. Why didn't I choose the Kia? Okay, I'm going to save that footage. Um, yeah, we just had those cars coming down the side. Um, my decision to not go for the Kia was actually an easy one. Um, and the simple reason was, by the time I'd ordered the Model 3, which was possibly three months or so ago, the Kia EV6 wasn't out in the UK. I wasn't able to even go and have a look at one, so I wasn't going to purchase a car with, uh, without seeing it or driving it. I do hope to drive a EV6 um, in the near future, to be honest, because it will be interesting for me um, to see whether or not that I've made the correct decision. I do like the look of the EV6 a lot, so I'll keep you posted on that one. The Kia, however, is the sister car. Here's someone else. Can't queue, won't queue. I'm sorry about that. The Kia is the sister car of the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Um, they share a lot of the same components and battery tech um, and DNA. And I did have a look at the Hyundai Ioniq. I was first drawn um, to the Hyundai um, because of its striking looks. I do really like the look of the Hyundai. Um, and I am a fan of the Korean brands both Kia and Hyundai I think they've really stepped up the game especially in the EV market so um, I did go and have a look at the Hyundai but it was actually my local dealership that caused all the problems I wasn't too impressed when I went to go and have a look at the Ionic uh, they had a, a demonstrator that I could go and have a look around and it was only the premium spec and honestly it felt pretty basic if I had gone up to the ultimate spec, which um, would have come with a lot of the things that I did want in a vehicle, it would have pushed the price to over £4,000 more expensive from the Tesla. But it wasn't that that really discounted it. Like I said, the dealership weren't the best. I did ask the manager a technical question about the power of the different models. And there's a few different choices with the Ionic. And the manager, I know and appreciate that all the information was pretty new, it had just come out, but he thought I was talking about the battery size and the different things. Um, and it was a simple enough question, but he got sort of on his high horse. He even went back into his office to check on the website to try and prove he was right. So in the end, I didn't even test drive it. And I got put off also by the interior. On the Hyundai, they've got separate seats and there's a flat floor across the front. And it honestly reminded me of the old transit vans that you used to drive years ago. Um, and I wasn't going to pay £45,000 for something like that. I'm sorry, it wasn't for me. So next we come to the Polestar. And the Polestar, if I was honest, if it wasn't a business car, if it was a personal car and I was, uh, I was, I was after an EV for a personal car, I think the Polestar would have been the one that I would have gone for. Um, I did enjoy a year or so back, some of you may remember, I had the Volvo XC60 as a, uh, a loaned car when my BMW got crashed into in a car park and while well, it was in for repair and I really enjoyed the Volvo um, and they're sort of a sister company as well it's quite complicated on the relationship between Polestar 
and Volvo, but again, they share a lot of the same technology and parts, and the feel of the Polestar was very, very good. I would have gone for the standard range Polestar, um, and it comes in, starting off, at about a £1,000 cheaper than the Model 3. But it doesn't come with all the bells and whistles. And when I'd spec two packs on it, um, I think there was a pilot pack and a plus pack, um, which gave me a few of the things that I wanted, like maybe uh, electrically operated seats and maybe the, the pan roof and a few other things. And it came in at another £7,000 on top. So it was £6,000, even more expensive than the Tesla. But unfortunately, even though it looks the part, it had to be crossed off the list. The Audi Q4 e-tron um, was also considered. Um, it was a little bit of a lower insurance group than the rest of them, um, which obviously helps to cut down on cost. Uh, but the spec that I would have gone for was the 40 S-Line. Now, performance wasn't um, anywhere near the Tesla or even some of the others, to be honest, but it's not all what I'm about. Um, the fit and finish of the Audi was very good they are put together quite nicely but the spec on them again is oh, I'll say basic they do come with um, for example there's an adaptive speed limiter on the Audi which um, I do quite like um, I've actually done a video on this that's going to be released shortly um, and the reason why I've done a video on this is because we've actually got a Q4 e-tron at the moment as a loan car until we wait for my missus's car to come um, so I am going to be able to sort of like show the comparisons and show why I chose the Tesla over the Audi. Um, so like I said, the, the fit and finish is uh, good in the Audi, uh, but they don't come with loads of kit. It doesn't even come with a reversing camera. And again, because I wanted certain things, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in this vehicle, um, I wanted to make sure it had certain things on it. And once I'd spec the Audi up, it was going to be £9,000 more than the Tesla. So that on its own was a big put off but it was again unfortunately the local dealership that I went to um, I went round had a look at one um, it wasn't well it, it was a demonstrator but I think one of the uh, sales reps was using it and it was absolutely filthy um, all right I can see through that but I actually asked the uh, the guy who I went down to see to try and book in for a test drive um, I called him a couple of occasions um, left a couple of messages, emailed him, but no one got back. So unfortunately, Audi lost a potential sale. So what happened at Tesla? Well, the dealership that I went to was the one in Chester, and I'd like to give a big shout out to Cameron, my sales rep, who we went to see um, a number of months back. Um, he was really professional, he was polite. The dealership was really busy as well. It was absolutely rammed. Um, I'd booked my test drive online, um, we arrived um, a little bit early, uh, we were accommodated, the car was ready, it was clean, um, my sales rep Cameron was uh, not pushy and that's one of the big things that I always look for in a dealership. But the car, honestly, was the only one that gave me a little bit of excitement. I've started um, calling the Audi that I've already mentioned that we've got on loan uh, the appliance and that's sort of how it feels. It feels as though it's just there to do a job and that's my worry or was one of my worries with electric vehicles that they're just going to be sort of like produced and have no soul or character and that's not what I felt from the Tesla. So the performance of the Tesla was also way ahead of the competition. Um, the acceleration in the Model 3, even the standard range one, is immense. It's really, really good. Um, and like I said, it, it sort of like gives the car a little bit of character and feeling over the others. Um, but performance isn't everything for me. Um, but the economy and the efficiency of the Model 3 is still something that not many manufacturers can get near to so um, honestly another box ticked towards the Tesla 
I did toy with the longer range model of the uh, of the Tesla Model 3 um, but after doing a little bit of digging it wasn't again worth the extra price now I know it does give you extra range and that range may have been useful with what I'm going to use the car for um, I am going to do some longer trips um, I'm actually going to go if possible onto mainland Europe. I don't want to give too much away about what I'm uh, what I'm planning for the channel but there are going to be some longer trips um, but I did a little bit of digging on a trip that I'm going to be doing reasonably regularly um, and it's going from Liverpool to Southampton where one of my lads lives with Erin and I worked out compared to the standard range plus which we've got and the long range model there was only a difference in journey time of about 10 minutes or so it does depend on what the traffic's like but to be honest the extra mileage of the longer range wasn't going to benefit me that much so the production of a bigger battery and the extra cost it's about eight and nine thousand pound more expensive didn't add up to me so that's why i went for the standard range so we didn't choose any options on the model 3 I went for the base colour, it was the cheapest, uh, it's £1,000 for a different colour or £2,000 for the red one. The red one does look amazing but it literally wasn't worth it. Um, I do like it in white as well, especially with the uh, the updated one with the, uh, the black surrounds to the cameras and the door handles and bits and bobs. I like the look of it. Um, there were options for bigger wheels. Um, didn't go for them easy or either i went for the uh the easy option of uh, just the normal standard they're called aero wheels and they're a little bit more fuel efficient um, they're actually a little bit smaller in size they're 18 inch wheels as opposed to the 19s which are the optional alloys and for me um, i've got experience of liverpool ro roads they're terrible um, so the extra ride comfort of the smaller wheels and the bigger profile tires was a no-brainer for me also now there were a few other things as well the tesla charging network is well documented to be the best um, it's obviously owned by the car brand and the car company um, and at the moment it's for the sole use of people with teslas now that may change going forward but that was also a big uh, selling point for me on the car just keep an eye on this one to the left yeah cool now, I'm just going to save that footage. All you do is press a little button up here, save and dash cam footage, and that's also another thing that I'm going to push on. Um, I'll go back to talking about the charging network in a moment, but what other manufacturers offers all the cameras on the car like Tesla do? Well, no one. Hang on a minute. I run a driving education channel on YouTube, so it was a no-brainer with that. Just going back to some of the other charging networks, they're expanding quickly. Um, I think Tesla is still uh, the one that um, honestly stands out for me, ease of charge and um, reliability. Uh, but like I said, the other networks are getting better and getting bigger quite quickly. So it's only gonna be time that's uh, gonna tell whether or not that my decision has been worthwhile. Um, will it be um, a relevant part of the decision to buy a car quite soon only time will tell um, that's going to be something that I'm going to be looking at over the next period of time while I have this car so um, we'll go into that a little bit more detail the charging speeds of all of the vehicles was pretty good I do actually think if I remember rightly the Hyundai and the Kia um, probably charged a little bit faster um, to be honest the amount of charge that they can all take in in a short period of time was quite imp impressive and for me if the network is good enough and your car can actually take the charge in a lot lot quicker that's more important than having a longer range and that was the way that I actually went in the end so there's no in the world um, I'm ever going to turn into a Tesla fanboy um, I think it's uh, nothing more than my viewers would expect nowadays with me uh, annoying that many subscribers over the years and, and calling out any 
um, poor road use um, I'm going to do exactly the same with this car and like I said I've already found things that um, are flawed with the technology that actually increases risk I'm going to document them uh, quite clearly uh, but just going on to that there's another um, little thing that I chose the Tesla for and it was because of their referral scheme I don't know whether you've ever heard about it but when you buy a Tesla um, you've got a referral code or you can produce a referral code or you used to produce a referral code and anyone buying a Tesla could use this referral code and the purchaser and the person who had the referral code both get a thousand free supercharging miles and it's been used really successfully by a number of uh, even YouTubers um, I used a code so I've got a thousand free supercharging miles which is going to aid um, a few of the videos that I've got planned but I actually thought with uh, the viewer numbers and the number of subscribers that there's going to be some people out there who watch my channel who are potentially going to buy a Tesla and if they'd used my code even just 10 people that's 10,000 miles um, that I could have got free supercharging and it was a big part to it to be honest so um, that was a big pull on my decision but unfortunately Elon's pulled the plug literally it's not a thing anymore um, whether or not it's going to be reintroduced in the future who knows but again that needs calling out um, it was a part of my decision I feel a little bit let down that that's now not the case I'm not going to lie as well, there were some tax benefits of me buying an electric vehicle for the sole purpose of producing videos. Um, I've got a good accountant and I've run my own business for over 20 years so um, I know what's going to be best and there was also a big part of buying a Tesla because honestly I'm trying to push my message out to as many people as I possibly can and if you put all those cars that I've mentioned in a group together which one do you think is probably going to generate the most interest on a YouTube channel so I'm looking forward to the future um, it's going to be an interesting next few months and years living with this uh, this Model 3 as always I listen carefully to all my viewers and subscribers so if you've got any thoughts on um, even my choice let me know in the comments but more importantly let me know what you think I should be covering in an electric vehicle in the near future keep safe everyone thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you soon